Greetings fellow industrians. In this video, I will show you how to construct a long distance resource transporter using units and logic. Before I start, I recommend you have some basic knowledge on how to use these logic commands, as I am bad at explaining how they work. If you don't have the knowledge though, no matter, just follow whatever I do. Anyways, without further ado, I will start constructing and coding. Firstly, what you need is two storage blocks, each with any type of logic processor. For, but for me, I will use containers and microprocessors. Usually, I only use two processors, but to make it less troublesome for your sake, I'll use three. And this third processor can be built anywhere on the map. Now this processor's purpose is to bind one single unit and flag it. So the first line should be the bind unit command. These are all the units you can bind, you can bind any of them. Next, you'll need the sensor command and set it like this. You can set the variable to anything you want, you just have to remember it. Set the thing you want to sense to the flag and then this to add unit. Then you'll need a jump command. You have to set the condition of the condition to if flag equals equals to zero. And then add a unit control command, set it to flag with a value of one. Link the jump command to the unit control command and then add stop. After that, copy paste the jump command but this time change the equal to not and then link it to the bind unit command. Now for the containers. One of them will be where your unit takes items from and the other one will be where it drops the items. For me, this one will be the one where the unit takes from and this one will be the drop point. I should add an item source here so the container will always be filled. Now for the take point logic code. The first two lines are the exact same as the first processor, bind unit and sensor. Next you'll need the jump command, set it to if flag equals and then the variable you set flag as previously, which for me is 1. Then copy it, set the equal to not and link to bind unit. Now what you want to do is to make sure your processor is linked to your container, which I forgot to do. Here I'll do it, for this one and that one as well. This is because we need to find the coordinates of the container, using sensor command. After that, we need another sensor command, but this one is to find the item count for the binded unit. So the variable equals to total items, total items in add unit. After that, we need another jump command, set it to if item count equals zero. Copy that and change equal to greater than. Then link that to uh, uh, this sensor command. The other jump command links to the next command which is another sensor command. This sensor command is used to find the item capacity of the binded unit. And following that is another sensor command used to find the first item stored in the container. Next, use a unit control command and set it to move to the X and Y coordinates of the container. Finally, use another unit control command to take items from the container, with code set to item take from container1, item item, and amount amount, because they are the variables I used just now. Now if I exit, only one unit should be binded and do its job. Well, unfortunately, two of them 
got binded for some reason. Now, why can't we bind two units or more, you might ask? Well, it's because this happens. They won't work unless I manually restart the code, and after that they will only do it once. And we don't want that. But don't worry, there's an easy fix. We just need to reset their flag state, and then restart all the processors. To do this, you simply bind unit, and then flag them to zero. After that, exit, wait a little while, and then delete the processor. And then restart each processor once. Now, one unit should do the job. Uh, oh, oh, it's coming, it's coming. It should take some items, and there we go. Now that that works, we can continue to code the item drop processor, which you can actually copy from this processor and then paste it here, because they are quite similar, just a few modifications. One of them is changing item take to item drop, then changing the amount to obviously amount. Next, the jump command symbols need to be traded. So the equal symbol becomes greater than and greater than becomes equal. So if I exit, this should start working. Never mind, what did I do wrong? Okay, I found the problem. I accidentally deleted the amount sensor instead of the item sensor. I forgot to mention that deleting the item sensor from this processor is optional, as it is not related to the code at all. So if I exit now, this should work. As you can see, it is successful. To show that this works at a long distance, I will build these two contraptions further apart from each other. And I need to build an item void for the contraption so it does not overflow. Wait, is it even working? No, no units are coming. Okay, what did I do wrong this time? I forgot to link it. Okay, okay. I dumb, I dumb. Just gotta restart and then it should work. Eh, the unit is coming. It's, it's working, it's working. After it should drop the items and return back. Yeah, there. Wait. No, the the item void is not even working. Okay, there we go. And oh, it returned back with the items, and then it's gonna return to the drop point. It should. Yep, and then repeat. As you can see, it works at any distance. And if you're wondering if it works in the official version, well, it does. As you can see. The only issue I encountered in the official version is there being no restart button. As you can see. So, you kinda have to get the code right every time. Now, if you want more units to work for you, you need an extra processor at each container for every extra unit you want. And remember to link them to their containers. Now what you want to do is open the flag processor and change the flag value to 2 or any number you like. Next, go to the item take processor, copy it, and then paste it in the new processor. And also change the flag values to 2 or the values you put just now. You also have to do the same thing with the item drop processor. You copy it, and then paste it in the new processor, and change the flag numbers to 2, or the number you chose. And this should command the second unit to do the same thing as the first one. As you can see, they are working together now. And you can do this however many times you like, as long as the flag value for the pair of processors are the same and different from other pairs. You can also straight up copy and paste the entire logic processor, but sometimes the container's name will change to container2. So beware of that, uh, if 
that happens, you have to change all the container's name in the processor in the processor's code to container two. There, there, there is a total of four. After that's done, you can change the flag values, do it for the other container, and it should work fine. Now there should be four working together. Th wait, they're not, they're not dropping because the it there's too many items in the container. But I think you can manage that yourself, so. I guess that's the end of it. If you have any questions, comments, ask there. Bye now. <laughs>